Hey, quick ramble about myself, Bar Riley. Hi. Before I get into my point, based on previous playlist projects, I got excited around July, August last year, and because it was still the middle of the writers and actors strike, I did tweet directly to Nando just to check even though I forgot that two years ago he said that last year might be his last one, which as we now know wasn't true. Then time went on, I changed my schedule from one blank scene waiting about a month and a half ago to my new obsession, followed up by me seeing the one last scene thumbnail and thinking, huh, wonder what that's about. didn't watch it. I actually learned about MatPat announcing his last episode hosting the theories coming up before finally going back and realizing this is what I was waiting for. So that was the runaround that I gave myself, like the clown I am. Sorry, clowns and jesters, not the same thing. But by now you all know what we're talking about, the climax of any story, film, game that really says something about what came before and possibly what comes next. With my choice being the end of the Amazing Digital Circus pilot episode. But wait a minute, that's the start of the series, not the end. Mr. Walrus, are you trying to jump on two trends at the same time? You know, I am pretty hungry. You didn't even do anything. So what? I can still be hungry. Well, not really, because we don't need to eat, drink, or sleep in this digital world. So the digital food here only gives off the virtual sensation of eating without any of the nutritional benefits. Jeez, lay off it. Since when are you an expert on the digital world? Expert on the what? Hey, I've had that quote for years. That's just a coincidence. But yes, the thesis of my essay is how the final shot of a pilot can set so much up for the rest of the series, which is the point of a pilot to get people interested, which this pilot really blew up online. This sub-series is just becoming me gushing about other internet creators with more talent than me. But for those of you who haven't seen it, the premise is a computer program where human consciences, human consciences, consciousness, conscious, consciousnesses, consciousness, 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 consciousness. But for those of you who haven't heard, the human, several human consciousness are trapped and slowly go insane. With the latest entry being Pomni. Through the first 24 minutes, Pomni is subjected to confusion about her environment, confusion about herself, chased by a giant monster, gets a glitch in her hand, runs through the back rooms, jumps into the void. Man made horrors beyond my comprehension. And the worst of them all, censorship. All culminating in this. Chills. Literal chills. As far as tropes and techniques go, it's pretty standard for a pilot episode. Introduce a new character at the same time as the audience. We are safe behind the glass wall while they have to deal with everything straight away. And we've already seen Pomni's breaking point. She started pretty uncertain and went down. From now, the only way to go is up. Now, I do want to discuss a deleted scene that I saw 
once they couldn't find again so for all I know I probably dreamed it up I have a habit of doing that but this alternate ending only removes the thousand yard stare replaces it with a conversation between Pomni and Kane the ringmaster Pomni takes him aside says dude you're messing this up we're all on edge no one really likes it here and Kane flatly submits himself to Pomni's guidance I would have chosen Ragatha but and I'm gonna say that this alternate ending is both very good that I would like to see and good that it was removed from episode one I'm gonna say it's better in episode two or three you know, we've set the premise now let's actually tell the story wherever that goes even ignoring that scene that I'm just remembering off the top of my head there is already a lot of symbolism in the episode of Pomni being the savior <laughs> Whatever the purpose of this world is, there is that looming threat of going insane and becoming a monster. Character work is pretty good. We already don't want that to happen to these characters. Mostly. Because already in one episode we've seen someone go from below stable to completely broken. And I think that's enough. We really don't need any more episodes of nothing but men torturing women and gender fluids. I, mean, I already don't like the implication that Jax is going to get worse. But, mm, yes, I know, season one is written, seven episodes. This is just what I'm hoping. I get, this is supposed to be a dark comedy. It's not as child-friendly as it looks. But dark comedy does not have to mean cruel or pessimistic. As much as I am getting back into Five Nights at Freddy's lately, I'm also over the child-friendly characters getting turned into horror. Winnie the Pooh and Mickey. I know that's not going to stop, but we can subvert in the other direction now a little. This show starts the creepiness, but I hope that it keeps the hope. The optimism. Because is the thing. <laughs> The world is shit. <laughs> Last few years have been shit for everybody. Me personally, a funeral every Christmas. I'm great. It's quite a while now. I've given up on long running series at all. You know, usually by the time the show ends, the thing that I started watching it for has been dropped or ruined. So I just don't start anything anymore. If it's already ended and I know the ending I agree with, maybe I'll start it, but I'm, I'm thinking of trusting this one. Okay, I, this show has already shown that it wants to address mental health and feelings. I'm putting my trust that it ends positively. It doesn't just ruin every other character. It doesn't degrade them all or I'm gonna trust it. I want them to get out well. Maybe punish Jax, but I want to see hope for my own sanity.